Uh, I'll be talking about the use of insecticide uh, to control Asian citrus psyllid, uh, particularly our work during the past uh, eight years, uh, optimizing the insecticide use, uh, testing the different products and timing of uh, application, and how all that fits into the long-term battle against HLB or citrus greening. Uh, we all know that insecticide use is now a common practice uh, against Asian citrus psyllid, and uh, our priority is to get maximum suppression because it's a disease vector. Uh, but we need to consider uh, several other things uh, uh, in the overall uh, citrus uh, agroecosystem uh, for the sustainability of uh, the system as well as the sustainability of the control uh, that uh, now we have with different products and for the sustainability of those products. Uh, we know that uh, cellar requires new growth uh, to develop and reproduce. The young trees uh, produce uh, more frequent growth, so they need uh, uh, more protection, and that's why uh, you heard a talk uh, that we have uh, neonicotinoids that provide uh, a longer suppression on the younger trees, uh, whereas uh, with the mature trees, although we are limited here, as Michael mentioned, uh, basically right now with the neonicotinoids. As far as the mature trees are concerned, uh, we have a dormant season where most of these mature trees in winter, uh, they do not produce the new growth, and mostly it is the adult psyllid that is surviving. Uh, and then we have the growing season where we deal with both the adults and the immatures. And uh, that we need to deal with both conventional and organic citrus because organic citrus, mostly either those blocks are within the conventional groves or in, 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 in neighborhood of the conventional groves. And if the management is not done properly in those groves, uh, they could serve as the spread or the refuge for the psyllid as well as for the disease. And mostly it's the foliar sprays uh, that we uh, apply to these trees uh, uh, to control psyllids. So we know when dormant and growing seasons and these applications are being made uh, by air and by ground, and the part what to spray is, is very critical. We need to know uh, which products we need to apply, how effective they are, and we need to work for their sustainability. Uh, we need to be applying them, keeping in mind the fact that it's not only the psyllid that we target, uh, but there are beneficial insects like honeybees, predators, uh, parasites, uh, uh, which, which are there, and predator and parasites, they not only spread psyllid, but several secondary pests. And uh, if we spread the beneficial insects, you are going to see the outbreaks of uh, uh, those secondary pests, which we are already seeing in, in the citrus agroecosystem, particularly with the use of uh, uh, broad spectrum insecticides. And then uh, also there is an issue of uh, pest resistance, uh, which, uh, which happens with the repeated use of insecticides uh, of uh, the similar mode of action, and, and that's also happening against the Asian citrus psyllid. So I'll be talking about the use of these uh, foliar sprays uh, uh, in the dormant season, then evaluation of the products uh, uh, during the growing season, uh, both for conventional and organic citrus, and uh, its relationship to the biological control, which is also an important component of the integrated strategy against psyllid uh, management. These were the initial uh, studies uh, where we evaluated the dormant foliar sprays uh, in 2007 and 8 uh, using a 50 hole, four hectare block of commercial citrus. Uh, in a randomized complete uh, block design in 2007, and the plot sizes were six hectare, and we used uh, chloropyrifos, organophosphate. There was one application in January, and no sprays applied afterwards through uh, August. Uh, in 2008, uh, we included a carbamate, wyodate, and also uh, uh, pyrethroid, danitol, uh, just to prove that the concept uh, worked with uh, multiple products. Uh, and again, there was uh, one application in January, uh, no application for seven or eight months. Uh, and then we also tested uh, an applica uh, a treatment with uh, two sprays uh, uh, of pyrethroid followed by an uh, organophosphate to test if the two sprays will enhance the control. 
these are the results of uh, 2007 study. Uh, sellers were significantly suppressed with that single application uh, all the way through July and August, both adults uh, and nymphs. Uh, and the beneficial insects like lady beetles, spiders, and uh, lace wings, uh, they were equally abundant in uh, treated and uh, untreated trees. Uh, and that's not because it was uh, just that one application, but there were no severe insecticide interventions, and that's why they were able uh, to do their job and colonize those trees. However, considering the status of uh, psyllid as a disease vector, uh, we are not recommending uh, not to spray during the growing season, but do an efficient monitoring and do a need-based spraying and using the selective insecticides and trying to target those applications uh, before the new growth comes up so that you can target the adult populations and reduce the chances of them to develop and reproduce. Uh, I'm not presenting the results for 2008, although the effect was similar. Here we saw about 10% uh, 10-fold uh, 10 reduction in 2007, and in 2008 it was a 15-fold reduction uh, with the effective treatments. Although the two spray treatment that we had uh, the effect was not really that great, probably because uh, those two treatments were not uh, very far apart. However, later on we see that with the two applications, the control is uh, much better. Uh, this tactic was uh, uh, adopted by the industry very soon. It, it started uh, immediately in 2008 and 9. Uh, I'm sorry about the font size on this slide. Uh, I'll go through uh, these results. Uh, there were two dormant seasons between December of 2008 and February of 2010. Uh, an average of about uh, 100,000 acres were treated during the dormant uh, winter period, 70,000 by air and about 30,000 by ground. Uh, there was about uh, 1.2 dormant applications. Here we have uh, 2009 account uh, before the dormant application and five to six months later in May after. Uh, similar situation for 2010, and then we have untreated control, which we were only able to maintain in 2009, because in 2010, uh, almost everybody was uh, using the dormant sprays in, in that region. So in 2009, the populations uh, uh, before the dormant sprays were 0.4 per tap sample, and when they were sampled in May, it was about 0.6 tap sample, so not a huge increase again in 2010. Uh, 0.2 before the dormant sprays, and in May it was about at the same level, it was 0.19. So we see very significant effect of uh, these dormant sprays area-wide applications. And if you take a look at the untreated control, if, if that was not done, the population went from 0.9 per tap sample uh, during the dormant season all the way to 15 adults per tap sample in May, about 14-fold increase. So that tells you the significance of uh, these dormant sprays, and we consistently see uh, the effects of those, wh what we observed in the initial studies. So now I'm gonna move on to the evaluations that we have been doing of, for several products during the growing season. Uh, for the soil applications in young trees, uh, and we have evaluated seven products, six active ingredients, and 28 treatments. Uh, mostly drench applications, although we had one treatment uh, of uh, uh, granular imidacloprid and uh, LD cops. It was mostly done in young trees, two to five years old, a randomized complete block design, four replicates, and five trees per replicate. Uh, for four applications in mature trees, 37 products, uh, 35 active ingredients, 171 treatments, uh, 11 IRAC mode of actions, and eight unknown mode of actions. Uh, speed sprayer was used for these applications, mature trees 12 to 16 year old, prone to induce new growth and encourage psyllid infestation, uh, RCB design for replicates, five trees per replicate, and treated rows were separated uh, by the buffer rows. Uh, we used the tap sampling method, uh, which I already mentioned earlier uh, for the dormant studies as well. Uh, basically, it's a uh, 22 by 28 centimeter laminated white uh, uh, paper sheet on a clipboard. 
uh, which is held under the branches uh, at random location in the tree, and those branches are tapped uh, three times with a PVC pipe or a stick, and the sillards that fall onto the sheet are counted. We did four tap samples uh, per tree uh, for the names. Uh, Ten randomly selected shoots were collected and examined in the laboratory under the microscope uh, to count the names uh, and get an idea of the effects on the, on the immatures. Uh, on the following slides, I will, I'll show the results of uh, those uh, treatments. Uh, and we have uh, ranked the effectiveness to summarize uh, by averaging number of days adult counts on treated trees were significantly less uh, than the untreated trees. And please note that all the products that are included uh, on, the, on the following slides uh, are not uh, labeled for citrus, so always uh, follow the instructions on the label. Uh, these are results for the soil applications in young trees. Uh, we see here that uh, these are the adult spot tap sample and uh, uh, nympho reduction data. And we see that LD carb, uh, which is uh, no longer allowed, the granular application of imidacloprid, branch applications of uh, imidacloprid, and thiamethoxam, uh, were all, uh, they all provided about uh, three months of control. Uh, of Asian citrus seller, and that was uh, a little longer uh, for the names. Uh, venom, another neonicotinide insecticide, uh, which is not labeled for citrus, was effective uh, relatively shorter compared to the others. And the new product, Siwanto, uh, was uh, also less effective. It, it, it was effective for about uh, 40 to 50 days. Uh, the good news here is that the, the new product, uh, Cientranil Prol, uh, Verimark, uh, it was effective, although it was uh, tested on relatively shorter trees, less than one year, but it was effective for about uh, 234 days. Uh, so even when we tested it, some other trials later on a, a little larger trees, it, it still provides a good suppression of psyllid. And this uh, product is, uh, hopefully it will be uh, labeled uh, soon, and it's a different mode of actions, and uh, it will be a good uh, candidate to rotate with the uh, neonicotinoids. Uh, meanwhile, uh, use the neonicotinoids and, as Michael said, uh, rotate it with different mode of actions of uh, foliar sprays. Uh, this slide, uh, uh, again, it's uh, hard to follow this uh, slide, and I forgot to mention on the previous slide that basically here uh, we have uh, the active ingredient followed by the product in the parenthesis and the number of times uh, that product was tested. Uh, and then on the uh, x-axis, uh, we have the average days of uh, activity. Uh, may, and, and then on the times the product was tested, obviously the more times uh, it was tested, the more confidence. But even as I explained in the method section, that even the one-time test uh, included a randomized complete block design, four replicates, and at least 20 trees uh, for a treatment. Uh, to make sure that uh, uh, the analysis was uh, uh, proper uh, uh, for these effects. Uh, here uh, we have a couple of products uh, that provided uh, an infill suppression for about a month to month and a half, uh, uh, which included uh, some new products uh, like Apta and Sivanto, and then there was Closer. Another product that's not labeled for citrus, we have Bethride, uh, Mustang Max, and uh, Lorsban. Uh, there were 20 products uh, that provided uh, suppression uh, for about two to three weeks. Uh, I'm not gonna name all those products. I'm gonna spend more time on the following slide where we have uh, uh, the effects on the adults. Uh, but we also included in this list, we had uh, uh, horticulture spray, IL-435, and uh, MPED, uh, which is a soap. And uh, the effects on the adults, which I'm gonna show on the next slides, are more pronounced compared to the names, because when you make these applications, particularly targeting the new growth, uh, most of these eggs and names, they are protected inside those newly opening uh, leaves and, and several of them escape contact with the application. Uh, and also, 
some of the products that are effective against NIMS, uh, you will see those effects accumulated into the adults count uh, later uh, in time. So this slide uh, shows you the effects on the uh, adults. These are adults per uh, tap sample. Uh, there were eight products in the list uh, that were effective, and they provided uh, one to two months of suppression uh, in that list. Uh, there were uh, five products that uh, they were not either labeled for citrus or, or they were new chemistries, and these included Apta, Siwanto, Warrior, Bethroid, uh, Fenzec, Actara, Supracide, and uh, dimethoate. So we see about, on the average, it was about uh, five weeks of suppression uh, with, with these products. Uh, then again, there were about uh, 19 or 20 products uh, that provided uh, suppression for an average of uh, three weeks, lasting from two weeks to a month. And uh, there were a few products here, like Closer, uh, Silmatrix, uh, and uh, MSR that were not uh, labeled for citrus. Uh, but again, here we have uh, 435 oil, uh, even though it uh, averages about two weeks of protection. Uh, most of these products, and even the ones here in, uh, in the top list, uh, are, most of them are recommended to be used with the 2, two to 3 percent of uh, this 435 oil. So this oil itself provides uh, good uh, reduction, although residual is less compared to the other synthetic insecticides. So this could be an option uh, for the repeated applications uh, to get silid control and, and reduce the amount of insecticide uh, during the growing season. Uh, there were a few products here. I already mentioned about the 435 oil. Uh, there was also Grandivo, uh, which is a microbial insecticide. Uh, there was Silmatrix. Uh, we have uh, Empede and uh, Azadirect. And, and these, these are the products that, that are also allowed for uh, use in organic citrus. Uh, some, some up here, Grandivo, uh, Silmatrix, and uh, 435, they were in the range where they were providing uh, two to three weeks of suppression. Uh, but we don't have much choices uh, for the organic citrus, and uh, we need to develop programs for effective management of citrus uh, in, in those blocks or groves. And, and we have initiated uh, some studies, and hopefully uh, we will have results in a year or so. Uh, also, most of these products, uh, when applied during the growing season, uh, they impact the beneficial insects significantly. On the following slide, I'll uh, show this example, and, and there are several other from, from the studies that we have done. Uh, this just compares uh, the number of lady beetles on the treated trees compared to the untreated trees, and we are looking at this uh, numbers at 24 days after applications, and still uh, you see significant uh, low number of lady beetles uh, in all those treatments uh, compared to the uh, untreated control. Uh, and it's not only the lady beetles, uh, there are several other predators and species-specific parasites which even matter more, uh, and uh, those are uh, affected uh, more by these applications. Uh, I have placed uh, some of them here uh, on this slide uh, that are there in the citrus groves. We have lady beetles, lace wings, uh, predatory mites, ants, and even there was a cockroach with the predatory function. And then we have uh, several species-specific parasites. We have Tamarixia radiata, uh, that uh, Florida, Texas, and California all working on uh, uh, to, against the Asian citrus psyllid. And we have uh, a much more progress here in Florida. Uh, then there are several for the leaf miner, for the white flies. So it's, it's an important component uh, for the sustainable management of uh, uh, citrus pests. Uh, we did do some studies to look at the impact of uh, these uh, beneficial insects uh, 
uh, in the initial years uh, when, when these beneficial insects were uh, more common uh, compared to now, uh, where, where we see less numbers. Uh, and here, uh, these bars, the light bars, show you the colonies uh, where uh, the colonies of Asian citrus salad were protected from the natural enemies uh, compared to the dark bars uh, where they were exposed. And you can see the huge differences here. There was about 5 to 27-fold reduction uh, in salad populations uh, in the colonies that were exposed, and most of these predators uh, were responsible. They, they were most common visitors. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, the level of mortality from the parasite Tamaraxia radiata uh, was not very high, and it averaged less than 10%. Uh, later on, we did a statewide study, which also uh, provided similar results uh, uh, that showed that, uh, uh, that uh, we needed to augment the populations of uh, uh, the parasite uh, to, to get better control of uh, psyllid. Uh, and therefore, we started uh, to augment the population of uh, this parasite. We brought in uh, uh, strains from Pakistan, South China, and North Vietnam. Uh, and uh, we already had one from, uh, that we call Florida strain from Taiwan and South Vietnam that were originally brought in uh, when psyllid got introduced. So we have well-established colonies of these uh, with division of plant industry and at our research center in Southwest. Uh, so far, uh, 1.7 million have been released in the uh, citrus uh, systems. Uh, and the whole point is, uh, it's, it's, as I said, it's, it's just one component of the whole management system. And uh, the time of the year when those trees are flushing, uh, there are several beneficial insects out there, and uh, they are contributing not only to the psyllid mortality, but to the several other pests uh, that colonize that new growth. So if, if you take a look here, uh, uh, concentrating in those months, uh, like March, April, the springtime, here in April, in one of the conventional groves, we were able to see 60% uh, parasitism uh, when we started uh, consistent releases of uh, Tamaraxia uh, radiata. Uh, in 2010, March and April, uh, we observed, at our research center, we observed about 42 uh, to uh, 50, for 48, uh, 52 percent parasitism at the research center compared to only about 22 to 28 percent at the conventional groves. Uh, if you take a look at the numbers here, uh, during that year our colonies were uh, low and we were not able to make releases in the conventional groves. And, and here you see the difference uh, in, in parasitism rates come at the research center where we were able to release about uh, 3,000 to 5,000 parasites about during the two months prior to these rates were observed, we saw that the parasitism rates doubled. So that gives us indication that with those repeated releases, at least it's possible uh, to improve those parasitism rates, and uh, uh, especially at times uh, when, when the harder chemistries uh, do collateral damage in, in, in the groves. And, and maybe uh, this may be an option also for the other systems where we are not using the insecticides in the residential areas uh, or where there are relatively softer chemistries like in the organic citrus. Again, another slide uh, in, in the Collier County at the research center. This is the data from the several blocks and the blocks where releases were made. Uh, we observed parasitism rates up to 80% and 60% uh, compared to 23% or less in the blocks where there were no releases. These results, the ones on the previous slide and on this slide, uh, are obtained using the sentinel plants. These are basically uh, potted plants infested with the psyllid immatures uh, that are taken out, hung into the trees for seven to 10 days, uh, brought back and examined, the nymphs are examined under the microscope uh, to see whether they are parasitized uh, or not. Uh, the situation with the feral populations is, is not the same uh, as you go into the groves due to the insecticide use and the continuous decline in the psyllid populations due to the dormant applications. Uh, over the past couple of years, uh, most of the time it's difficult to find uh, psyllid populations, and when you do, they are, they are scattered or, or you find low numbers, but still uh, you do see uh, a parasitism uh, at some locations uh, where, where the releases were made, and we were able to see uh, uh, that the parasitism rate doubled or, or tripled at locations uh, where releases were made 
uh, compared to the blocks uh, where there were no releases. Uh, so as I said again, that uh, uh, th this is one component of the management uh, strategy uh, against the Asian citrus salad, and uh, maybe these releases that we are doing at this level, uh, maybe they are not enough. And uh, right now, the division of uh, plant industry, uh, uh, they are uh, building a new facility in Dundee, Florida, uh, to mass produce uh, this parasite, so then larger numbers can be released into the groves. And uh, we, uh, with the hope that we will be able to uh, increase the performance of this parasite. But again, we need to be careful with the use of insecticides uh, during the growing seasons if, if we opt to give an opportunity to, to these uh, natural enemies. So summarizing uh, the findings, uh, basically in, in the soil uh, applications in the young trees, uh, we know the drenches of uh, imidacloprid and thiamethoxam and even uh, clonthiodeion and other uh, neonicotinoids provide uh, similar effect uh, and good control for about three months, uh, but they all are neonicotinoids. Uh, the experimental products, Sivanto and Venom, they were not that effective, uh, and uh, the Venom is a neonicotinoid, and Sivanto's mode of action is uh, uh, not known yet. Uh, the new product, Centronel Pro, with more of Action 28 was very effective, and it's hoped to be labeled soon to rotate with the new nicotinide insecticides uh, for young tree program uh, to avoid uh, ACP resistance. Uh, for the foliar applications, uh, we know that dormant sprays are uh, very effective. Six months of suppression initially, consistent effects later on in the area-wide applications. Two sprays are better than one. Uh, and most of the products during the growing season, uh, one to seven weeks of suppression, depending upon the product, uh, and most of them negatively impacting the beneficial insects. So it, 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 it's emphasized that uh, we need really good dormant applications and followed by careful applications uh, during the growing season. Uh, experimental products, Tolfan Parad, uh, Flu Parad, Ifuron, Sulfoxaflor, and uh, Chromobacterium substagy performed equal to or better than the recommended products. So new products uh, are to be labeled soon, so there will be more choices available. Uh, repeated releases of the parasite appear to be contributing to psyllid mortality. Uh, and we, as I said, we have a new facility being established in addition to the facilities that we have uh, at DPI Gainesville and SWIFREC Immokalee. So there will be more releases uh, going into the system and uh, with hope to see uh, increased parasitism rates. Uh, so applications during the growing season of the foliar sprays should be based on monitoring, rotation, and use of selective chemistries, and try to anticipate new growth and make applications prior to that growth uh, to target adults and conserve uh, and augment biological control. And uh, all this uh, definitely contributes to the uh, management of ACB and HLB and the issues that we have uh, in, in the long run. Uh, with that, uh, I would like to thank uh, Citrus Research and Development Foundation, all the uh, other contributors uh, for funding, all the growers and companies uh, uh, that allow us to conduct research on their groves, plant division of plant industry for quarantine facility, uh, Animal Plant and Health Inspection Service for Permit to release the parasites, and our hardworking team at the SWIFT rack. And thank you very much for your patience.